So the video interview that IGN just dropped today was just a small segment of a much larger interview that's more complete in written form on their website. I'm just going to combine the highlights of both the video and the written interview in this video for the sake of discussion. And as always, the source is cited. That sounds ridiculous. Source incited. Anyway, they're going to be in the description, so if you want the full scoop, read there. Anyway, let's get on with it. Okamoto-san explains that in Silent Hill's absence, we've seen many copycat indie projects getting varying degrees of popularity over the years, piggybacking off of Silent Hill's formula. He says, We've decided that if the brand's identity is true psychological horror, we needed to start by remaking Silent Hill 2. There were, of course, some people inside the company who thought it would be better to start with one, but I wanted to start this project with something that symbolizes this identity. I still find it kind of weird that we're starting with two, considering a a brand new audience is about to jump on board the Silent Hill train. I can understand why if they're going to go down the road of psychological personal stories rather than digging back into the heavily cult oriented story of Silent Hill 1. IGN posed the question, so what's your impression of the Bloober team? Okamoto-san replies with, I get the sense that they take their work very seriously and that they believe video games to be art even more than we thought. Japanese people are so shy when it comes to declaring video games as art, you know, but I feel like they truly believe that. That's exactly why they treat Silent Hill's artistic sound and visuals with so much respect. Okamoto-san continues with, to begin with, a Bloober team is amazingly talented at creating environments. You can really experience what James is feeling just by walking through the foggy town. I think they're excellent at making backgrounds, environments, and atmosphere. On top of that, they're putting a lot of attention into combat in order to make the gameplay that much deeper. I see them as very hard workers who are full of love for Silent Hill. Man, it's really interesting to hear that the Japanese are shy to call video games art. Such an idiosyncratic nation when compared to the West, eh? But anyway, it seems that Okamoto-san is really confident about Bloober Team's work here, and it sounds like he's been hands-on with it too, by the way he talks. Probably with that proof of concept that Bloober sent them to get the project greenlit in the first place. Man, I'd love to get my hands on that. I don't know if this is easing my worries or making me, like, question his direction. Direction. I guess only the final product will determine that. And then we get a lovely bombshell from our boy Masahiro Ito as he tells us he's in charge of the combat design. Here's us thinking he was involved with just his R, but no, he's in the weeds here, helping Bloober with their first go at combat. Ito-san is pretty vocal on Twitter and in conversations daily with fans of Silent Hill. He's no stranger to the technical side of game development either. He keyframed the animations of the monsters in the original Silent Hill 2, after all. Ito-san himself chimes in here with, Personally, I'm very satisfied with the quality of the town and atmosphere of the Silent Silent Hill 2 they're making. I really get the feeling that they respect the original while still making sure to arrange things in their own way. In particular, we had strong demands about the motif of fog when first starting on this remake, and they were sure to depict it just as we wanted. I believe from the bottom of my heart that they're making something incredible. This fills me with joy to see Ito-san so enthusiastic with his words. He's got such a deadpan look about himself most of the time, looking much like he says like a Yakuza member, with sarcastic one-liners to replies to people on his tweets. Honestly, if you don't follow him on Twitter, uh, you really should. It's hilarious at times. IGN then prompt the team with mentioning that James looks older in the trailer for the remake than he did in the OG version. After speaking with Mr. Ito, we decided to raise James's age in the game a bit. This is in part because fans from 20 years ago are older now, and because the average age of people who play video games has risen too. We want to depict a James who is more mature and has had to suffer through more in his life, and to do that we've raised his age, though only a bit. If he looks older to you, it's not your imagination. Now this, I guess, is gonna divide some fans. I think that the age of James being a bit older won't really change too drastically any implications on the story of the game, but Okamoto-san mentioning that they wanted James to look like he suffered more in his life has me scratching my head a little bit. You see, I guess James would have suffered sort of justifiably emotionally during Mary's sickness, and also selfishly when he couldn't stand having to look after her, or how she would get short-tempered with him at times because, you know, she was dying. Other than that, I guess we have James's alcohol issues, but I'm concerned. Are they going to make him have like a much harder background for this remake? Like throw the pity party on a bit for James? In the previous interview I covered with Anna Yazinska, she mentioned trying to deliver the story to a contemporary audience. Are we now saying that a modern contemporary audience wouldn't be able to accept James's actions in the story without him having had a hard life? What an unnecessary tongue twister, him having had a hard life him having had a hard life. That's just speculation here, but it's some food for thought, I guess. Let's get back on the rails with this interview as we have the burning questions about the new combat design and camera perspective. IGN asks, what kind of new elements have you added in the Silent Hill 2 remake? Is there anything aside from graphical changes that you can tell us about? Okamoto-san responds with, one thing that I can say is that unlike the original Silent Hill 2, the remake uses a more immersive camera. We really hope that players will get to experience its atmosphere, which will stir up lots of different emotions, as well as the game's combat that's even more fun than before. I mean, let's be honest, the combat in Silent Hill 2 was dreadful. By far the worst part of the game, but it needed to be there. 
IGM Press with, how did you change your approach when it came to monster AI and the variety of different enemies? Our boy Ito-san replies with, first off, we're improving the combat design, something that received a lot of feedback in the original. Doing so would be difficult without changing the way the monsters move and act, so we've tried to respect the original designs while adding combat that's fun and new to the remake as we improve a number of enemies. I think that the remake has ended up as a more interesting experience than the original. Wow, that is a big statement there, Mr. Ito-san. As a fan of both your work and Silent Hill, I'm inclined to get hyped right now. IGN then asked about how the jump to 4k has some fans worried that the gritty textures and charm of the original may get lost when the resolution is so high for this new wave of Silent Hill. Okamoto-san says, I think that in the original there were places where the player used their imagination to compensate for the graphical limitations at the time. I hope they can take a close look at all the remake's completed visuals though. Bloober Team is excellent at recreating the atmosphere of the original so I think you'll be able to feel its horror even more than the original once you walk through the game with a controller in your hands. He says original a lot. Thanks Thanks to the latest technology and Bloober Team's efforts, we've embodied the atmosphere of details that players used to have to imagine, and I think that should be clear once you start walking around in the game's spaces. I personally believe that Silent Hill's atmosphere is definitely recreatable on modern hardware. After all, haven't most of us said for years now how we'd love to be able to jump back into the world of Silent Hill but with all the video game improvements the series missed out on due to the era that they were made in? I'm sure some purists would still stand by the older games looking better, and to some extent I can agree, but I'm definitely in the camp of bringing the series back to life in the modern day so I want the 4K grime, rust and blood in my life. The interview then shifts to reminiscing about the original Silent Hill 2 with some really cool insights. I will have to cherry pick my favourite bits from here, otherwise this video will end up being too long, but remember to check out the full article for those who want all of it. IGN asks, I would love to hear from Mr. Ito and Mr. Yamaoka about what it was like while making the original Silent Hill 2. What was the starting point for the original? For example, could you share any stories about why it wasn't connected to one, or why it became what you could call a literary title? Ito-san responds, While I can't speak for the entire team at the time, I personally wouldn't be able to say that I set out to make Silent Hill to something you would call a literary title. As far as how the game came about though, the main production team responsible for making the first Silent Hill had been taken off development for two. We found ourselves asking if the team that remained could make an authentic sequel to one without the members who depicted the core images of its world. After a lot of brainstorming about the idea of making two a spin-off but still a sequel, we ended up with the game it became. One story from when we were brainstorming, and it felt like the game could have gone in a number of directions, involved the film Lost Highway by the director David Lynch. It's a classic example of a film that's difficult to understand with just one viewing, and a key part of its story is the way the protagonist changes part way through. There was a period when we were strongly influenced by that to have a twist where the protagonist suddenly switches mid-game. Ultimately, we decided to just focus the story on the character of James, as players may have had a difficult time understanding the game if we had gone with that idea. Also, not only were there very few members left on the team at that point, there were also issues of budget and development time. We were slow to start researching the PS2 development kit as well, which meant we couldn't establish a testing period we could use to improve the game's combat design. There were times when we barely had any effective methods at our disposal, but we decided to focus on story after a lot of thought, which is why the game turned out the way it did. Man, I just love hearing the behind the scenes stuff from an era that's so long behind us now. These guys worked their asses to the bone on a shoestring budget and ended up ultimately delivering life-changing work. It's a shame that we couldn't have Takayoshi Sato come back to work on this remake too. He was an extremely core member of the original game's development. His work included, and this is coming from the Silent Hills wiki, Sato-san created the higher res characters himself, the environments, all aspects of modeling and texturing, as well as lighting and the CGI movie sequences. For Silent Hill 2, he worked on the storyline, the game system, and led all the pre-production activities. I just wanted to give Sato-san a bit of a shout out here as he was like an unsung hero of Silent Hill 2's development. Yamaoka-san was also asked about his music design for Silent Hill Hill, and I would love to include all of it here in this video, but I'm already quite conscious of the time. A tidbit that did stand out though was about the theme of Laura track, um, and I found it quite amusing. IGN asks, I'd like to ask about the music piece Theme of Laura. It's become a standout work even amongst your many famous pieces, but why Laura and not James or Mary? Yamaoka-san laughs and then responds, the reason for that is because the first cutscene to be finished back then was Laura's. To be honest, it got that title because Laura was the first character I saw. Not so much because I set out to write a theme song for her. I find it pretty funny now knowing why the theme of Laura track is just such an epic piece of music and doesn't suit the character at all, but it did give the game itself an iconic theme song which I regularly listen to, and I'm sure a lot of you guys do too. Moving to the final segment of this gorgeous interview, IGN asks, Finally, what does the future hold for the Silent Hill series? What kind of vision do you have for it? Ito-san is first in with, I hope it will be something diverse, the way it was when going from the first Silent Hill to the second. I think it will become something that players aren't even able to imagine and I strongly hope for that to be the case. Yamaoka-san adds, Bloober Team, developer 
developers in Poland are remaking this game that was first created with uniquely Japanese sensibilities. They love Silent Hill, a Japanese horror title, and deeply understand it. When they bring it back, I think it will have a slightly different taste by their hands while strongly retaining the sensibilities of the original game. Though society and our living environment and situations have changed since we first picked up a controller 20 years ago, I think they're going to make a Silent Hill 2 that matches our present day perfectly. And this is what I'm always harping on about with Silent Hill, is that distinctly Japanese DNA that was in the first four games just made them stand out so much to me as a kid. It's the reason why I'm so concerned when the Western devs are trusted to make Silent Hill games, it just won't feel the same. I'm convinced that will be true even with this remake, but I hope whatever it ends up being is something truly great. Just even if it's an objectively good game, that'll do wonders for the healthy future of the franchise. Okamoto-san ends the interview with, We've announced a number of new titles in addition to this remake. I knew from the start of this project that just a single remake would not be enough for the players to consider it a series revival. There were unfortunately some projects that never got started, but we've been talking with many creators and are still having lots of discussions about what to do going forward. I'm happy to see players reacting to Silent Hill F, which is a Japanese style horror game, with even stronger interest than I expected. The future of Silent Hill will only continue. I think what's important about the series is that it's unique, highly artistic and original. I'd like to continue focusing on that. So Konami went from slapping Silent Hill on pachinko machines carelessly to now opening the iron gates and being like, Silent Hill, talk to me. But Okamoto does allude to there being even more Silent Hill projects that haven't even been announced yet. Let's not forget that Silent Hill The Short Message was recently rated again in Taiwan and still hasn't been acknowledged by Konami in any of their recent announcements. So strap yourselves in guys because the Silent Hill revival has got me kind of pumped now. And with all of these games, like some or at least one has to be good, right? Right? If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching guys and enjoying the content here. So hit the like button if you liked the video, hit the dislike button if you didn't like it, and express your opinions in the comments. I'd love to talk to you about this interview with IGN and the series going forward. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new for more Silent Hill and horror goodness. But until next time, I'll see ya when I'm looking at ya. Thanks guys.